Okay, thank you. We'll begin. Uh, my name's Robin Harding. I'm Tokyo Bureau Chief for the Financial Times. It's my pleasure today to welcome Masatsugu Asakawa, who is the Vice Minister for International Affairs at the Ministry of Finance. Um, I'll introduce him in a moment, but let me first say that although the announcement said this was to be in Japanese with um, English interpretation, Asakawa-san will give his speech in English. Um, he may answer in Japanese for the Q&A. If so, uh, then Mary will interpret those parts only. So Asakawa-san has a long and distinguished career in international finance, working around the G20 um, and other international bodies like the IMF and the OECD. Um, notable highlights are he was executive assistant to Prime Minister Assol at the time of the creation of the G20, so he's seen this process from the very beginning, um, and also was intimately involved in the BEPS, the base erosion and profit shifting, that's right isn't it? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, process which is run by the OECD and the G20 and is essentially involved in coordinating global corporate taxation hmm. so that uh, companies can't avoid tax by shifting their profits around the world. Um, he was effectively the man running the show at the recent G20 Finance Ministers Summit in Fukuoka, so I hope he can give us an update on that, and he'll be equally running the financial side of the show at the G20 Summit in Osaka next week. So with that, I'll turn it over to Asakawa-san to give us his opening remarks. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Robin. Oh, well, uh, yeah, uh, my name is Masa Asakawa. I'm Vice Minister of Finance and Financial Sherpa uh, for uh, G20 uh, process under Japanese presidency this year. Uh, I, 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 we just been to Fukuoka uh, to, you know, uh, complete, uh, you know, finan uh, finance minister and central uh, bank's governor's meeting uh, last week. And we are now preparing for, uh, you know, G20 summit meeting in Osaka uh, next weekend. And uh, today I... Uh, I'm requested uh, to talk to you about uh, all, all what we achieved, uh, what we are going to discuss in Osaka in our finance track. Uh, please remember, you know, I will cover only finance track, you know, our matters, uh, including global imbalance, aging, uh, BEPS, as Robin said, and so on, but not really, you know, trade issue itself, uh, and also, you know, a couple of other things, WTO reform and so on. That's really, you know, responsibility of Sherpa. Okay, uh, well, I circulated a couple of you know, slides for your reference, uh, including uh, uh, this uh, slide, uh, coupled with uh, Communicate Self, uh, which was issued in Fukuoka uh, last week, and also G20 principles for quality infrastructure investment, we, we, which I will touch on uh, uh, later. Okay. Uh, as Robin said, uh, uh, G20 summit meeting was created uh, uh, right after the Lima shock. Uh, Lima shock took place uh, in September 15th of 2008, and the very first summit meeting was held, uh, hosted by U.S. in Washington D.C. in uh, November uh, 2008. At the time, uh, 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 Ms. Uh, uh, Aso-san was Prime Minister, and uh, I accompanied him uh, to go to uh, D.C. and also to the second uh, G20 summit meeting, which took place in London uh, in April uh, 2009. Uh, at that time, you know, uh, the world economy was facing really, you know, a very serious uh, financial uh, crisis, and uh, the leaders of G20 countries uh, really uh, seriously discussed how to overcome that. Uh, serious uh, global financial uh, crisis. And basically, uh, we agreed to, uh, to do three things uh, to overcome. First, uh, uh, expand, expansion of fiscal spending, like we did, like China did. China introduced two, two, uh, 4 trillion yuan uh, public investment plan, and also US did, European countries did. And second, uh, you know, uh, kind of intro, intro, introduction of the uh, feasible, practical, practical, and reliable uh, financial regulation, uh, exemplified, exemplified by you know, Basel uh, regulations. And finally, we also did agree uh, to expand the capital base of the uh, international financial institutions, notably IMF, World Bank, and ADB, and so on. Okay. So those are things uh, which uh, we discussed at that time under crisis situation. 
Okay. Now, after 11 years, uh, crisis is of course over, and uh, the, I have to call uh, you know call this uh, it's a kind of a peaceful time. And uh, ironically speaking, under crisis situation, uh, you know uh, the momentum uh, for policy coordination in the context of G20 is easier than otherwise. <laughs> under the peaceful time, it's not really easy to maintain the momentum uh, for policy coordination in various you know, aspects. Uh, so uh, this year, you know, uh, you know, under Japanese presidency, uh, we just, uh, you know, wondered what kind of agenda we should, uh, you know, uh, uh, set uh, for a G20 discussion for one year under Japanese presidency. And if you look at uh, uh, the uh, uh, page three of the, this slide, uh, these are the you know things uh, uh, we did agree uh, last year actually. Uh, kind of, you know, priorities uh, items under Japanese finance track. So starting with the global economy, surveillance, 1A is surveillance, which is usual thing. You know, uh, D20 is a primary fora uh, for, you know, monitor and survey uh, the economic situation at that time. So, we, of course, we should do it. But quite uniquely, uh, we introduced the global imbalances agenda, 1B, and aging issue, 1C. Uh, and uh, the second pillar is called the concrete actions towards robust growth, uh, you know, starting with quality infrastructure investment, uh, for which we could introduce G20 you know, principles to define what quality infrastructure means uh, in Fukuoka. And E, resilience against natural disasters, F, uh, UFC, universal health coverage, and G, debt to sustainability in low income countries, and so on. And lastly, you know, uh, pillar three, uh, you know, talks about responses to structural changes caused by innovation and globalization. And here we talked about BEPS. Okay, so I, I, I would like to briefly touch upon the very impo important, you know, achievement <laughs> coming out of the Fukuoka uh, meeting one by one. First, uh, uh, surveillance. Uh, if you look at page four. You know, uh, 1A is surveillance, and actually, uh, page 5 is, uh, you know, IMF uh, World Economic Outlook uh, as of April uh, this year. And as you uh, may know it, you know, uh, IMF uh, revised downwards its prospects for world economic growth in its April WEO. Uh, for example, uh, their, their, their expectation uh, uh, for the world economic, uh, world economic growth rate for this year, 2019, uh, is 3.3%. Uh, well, as, as is shown at the bottom of the you know, uh, mid column of this page. And that was uh, downgraded from 3.5% uh, from their January uh, you know, uh, prospects. But the important thing is they, they project uh, that uh, this uh, world uh, economic growth will, re will be picking up uh, from this year towards the next year. So actually, the ne their expectation for the next year's uh, global economic growth is 3.6, okay, upwards. <laughs> So in Fukuoka, we discuss this. Uh, of course, you know we recognize various risks, like you know, uh, <coughs> kind of impact on emerging emerging capital markets, you know, uh, of uh, monetary policy normalization in some some advanced countries, including U.S., and also slowing down of some emerging markets, uh, no, notably in China, and you know, European, you know, a political uh, kind of uh, turmoil, I would say. And, uh, and trade escalation, of course. Uh, but uh, we hope, uh, we strongly expect that those you know, downward risks, although we recognize clearly those risks are there, uh, but we strongly hope that those risks would not materialize uh, in uh, coming years. And based on that assumption, we expect, uh, uh, we, we support uh, this uh, uh, IMF World uh, Economic Outlook, which says, you know, uh, where the economic uh, growth rate would be picking up uh, from this year to next year. So, as a result, the communicate language says uh, growth, uh, global growth appears to be stabilizing and is generally projected to pick up moderately later this year and into 2020. Okay. But at the same time, in Fukuoka, we spend uh, you know, uh, kind of, uh, yeah, time uh, to discuss you know, how to show our concern, finance minister's uh, concern about escalating trade tensions, right? Although trade, trade policy itself is in the hand of the trade minister and eventually head of states, 
read us, right? Yeah, but uh, even even that's a case, you know, we discussed and agreed to you know insert a couple of language about uh, escalating trade tensions. Uh, three languages, okay. One, uh, para one uh, says. Uh, most importantly, most importantly, he said, trade and geopolitical tensions have intensified. Okay, we uh, utilize the wording most importantly and intensified. That's the first thing. The uh, second thing, uh, second sentence says, we will continue to address these risks. These risks obviously include trade tensions and stand ready to take further action. Okay, that's the second point. And third point is, in para two, uh, the, three, the third line from the bottom, we said we reaffirm our leader's conclusion on trade at Buenos Aires Summit. You, you might re uh, remember that in Buenos Aires Summit, uh, you know, trade para says, you know, WTO reform is important. Okay, WTO reform is very important. And also, we should recognize, Buenos Aires you know, uh, statement said, uh, we should recognize uh, the uh, contribution uh, by, uh, of the uh, multilateral trade systems. It says multilateral trade systems, okay? And we refer to that you know, statement here. Those are the three sentences you know, in this communique by finance ministers uh, to, to, to talk about their concerns about on uh, trade escalating trade tensions. Okay, uh, that's one thing. But more importantly, as a finance minister, we <laughs> did discuss a global imbalance issue. Uh, that uh, uh, is shown in part three of this communique. And uh, the reason why you know, we thought, Japan thought, uh, it's very, it would be very important uh, to resume uh, the discussion about global imbalance, imbalance is very, very simple. You know, well, nowadays, uh, the tendency is to talk about trade balances only bilaterally, right? That's not really my thing, <laughs> so, so to say. Uh, so, <laughs> I, I, you know, I, you know, G20 used to discuss a lot about global imbalance, like in the first in Washington DC summit meeting, the second uh, London summit meeting, and so forth. Uh, but uh, for the last, I would say, seven, eight years, uh, we stopped to discuss about global imbalance issue uh, by G20. So I very much would like to you know, resume this uh, discussion uh, to recognize that you know, uh, imbalance issue should be looked at not only by bilateral, but in a multilateral context. Okay, multilateral context. And second, you know, trade, trade balance is one thing, uh, but there, there are a couple of other very important you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, balancing you know, uh, elements, uh, namely, Namely, a service trade, service in trade, trading service. That's very important. And the US, uh, UK, uh, uh, those countries have a very strong competitive advantage in uh, service in trade. Sorry, trading service. Uh, so why not? You know, we just discuss how to you know liberalize more and more uh, trading service to you know contribute to the improvement of global imbalance situations. That's one thing. The second thing uh, I really wanted to mention. Uh, and it, it is mentioned in this communique is that how about income account? As you may know it, Japanese, Japanese is, is, Japan is quite unique in, in the sense that our uh, current account surplus is uh, 4% of our GDP, okay, 4%. But no trade surplus. Almost 100% of our current account surplus comes from income account, which means you know, interest rate receipt, dividend receipt based on our past investment in US continent, European continent, Asian continent. Okay, so, so drivers, you know, while deciding, you know, uh, income account is totally different from those, you know, deciding uh, trade balance and uh, trading service, right? So why don't we just expand our discussion to cover those, you know, other issues as, as well, trading service and income account? That's the first thing. The uh, second thing is, of course, you know, well, uh, talking of global imbalance, we should uh, discuss IS balance, investment savings account. That's Econ 101, right? But at the same time, we should be careful. For example, uh, aging matters a lot. You know, like in the case of Japan, uh, whenever aging is proceeding in one country, uh, we see, you know, a gen general tendency uh, that uh, the savings rate of the household uh, is going up to prepare uh, for, for their you know, life, right? R R longevity. And uh, that has uh, some implication on IS balance, of course. But is that a bad thing? 
that, is that uh, need, need to be stopped? I don't think so. That's quite a natural tendency, and uh, we should not stop it, actually. We cannot stop it. But at the same time, again, in, in the case of Japan, corporate sector, not household, but corporate sector, you know, where by definition they are supposed to invest, not save. But in Japan, they save more than invest. Okay, so that's not really a good thing. So a couple of years ago, we introduced the corporate governance. Uh, we, we enhanced our corporate governance uh, you know, culture by introducing corporate governance code and also stewardship code to encourage you know Japanese corporations to invest more, to pay more salaries to, to their employees, and also to pay more dividends for, for their stock, stock uh, uh, shareholders. But also from IS point of view, this is not a really good thing. Uh, so uh, excess saving in corporate sector need to be improved, and so on. But all in all, all in all, I, I can go on and on, on but uh, let me stop here about these uh, topics. But all in all, uh, the basic message you know shown in this communique is you know uh, imbalances should be looked at in the context of multilateral framework, and also not only trade, uh, but we should expand our scope spectrum to cover other elements as well. Okay, that's a global imbalance. And I'm very happy uh, that uh, for the first time in G20 communique, uh, we could uh, you know, say uh, you know, many things about global imbalance in para three, as uh, you see on this piece of paper. Aging, para four. Uh, this is quite Japanese, and uh, Japan is the most advanced you know, country in terms of aging. Uh, so uh, for the first time, it's quite strange that G G20 never ever discussed the aging issue in such a comp comprehensive way. So I very much would like to start a uh, discussion about aging among G20 colleagues and our presidency. And, uh, but at the same time, we recognize uh, that in terms of you know, uh, you know, stage of aging, you know, well, stage differ from country to country. For example, Japan is the most advanced. China is suffering from aging. Korea, Brazil, Singapore, of course. But the next year to Japan is Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia is more concerned about you know, how to secure jobs for youngsters because they don't suffer from aging yet. But uh, quite frankly, you know, when I explained this agenda uh, to Saudi minister, Saudi minister immediately said, sooner or later, it's coming to us. Okay? So although the stage of aging differs from country to country, it's, it's problem for everybody. It's challenges for everybody. So uh, in the, in, in this, uh, from this uh, point of view, uh, in Fukuoka, we divided uh, ministers into three groups most advanced age, aging countries, middle and less, okay? And let's then discuss, and we got together and, you know, uh, 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 summed up. And our, you know, uh, discussion is uh, properly uh, reflected in para four of this agenda, talking about what kind of impact uh, on uh, fiscal policy, of course, uh, through, you know, uh, social, uh, 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 safety network, and also it would have a very significant impact on mon monetary policy as well, uh, because uh, probably uh, as aging proceeds, uh, the natural interest rate would be lowered. Okay, and obviously it has a significant impact on labor market, labor supply situation, and eventually we should discuss the kind of uh, equity issues among generations. Okay, uh, those are things that we discussed and you know um, I mentioned here in para four. Uh, next thing is uh, uh, high quality infrastructure, uh, which is mentioned in Para 7. Uh, high quality infrastructure uh, is uh, one of the topest priorities under the Japanese presidency. And actually, when we hosted the G7 uh, uh, summit meeting uh, two years ago, we already discussed this among, among G7 countries and introduced the so-called Iseshima principle. You might remember the Shima principle, you know, was announced in the Shima, uh, which defined what the you know high quality infrastructure means, which included something like you know, high quality inf infrastructure should be environmentally fr friendly, and uh, and uh, natural disaster proof, and necessary uh, transfer need to be transferred, okay, know how uh, technology. Uh, 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 should be transferred to uh, 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 beneficial countries, 
And uh, above all, you know, uh, any infrastructure should be cost effective in terms of life cycle cost, including maintenance cost and operational cost. Okay, that was fine. We were we were happy with that the two years ago, but when we looked at that principle six months ago, we, we strongly felt something was missing, something were missing, especially governance aspect of infrastructure like transparency, openness, you know, uh, and also debt to sustainability of that country need to be taken into account. Those governance aspects are missing. So under our presidency, we tried uh, to update the principle once again to include those missing elements and asked G20 countries, okay, G20 countries to endorse it. Okay. <laughs> And, uh, uh, well, it was endorsed, finally, uh, including China, India, and so on, emerging donors as well. And uh, I'm especially happy with the fact that we could uh, you know, highlight the governance aspect of high-quality infrastructure uh, by publicizing these you know, principles, okay? And uh, uh, it's properly mentioned in part seven. Uh, or dead issues. Uh, we also discussed, you know, our debt sustainability in low-income countries uh, separately uh, from high-quality infrastructure issues. That uh, is uh, dealt with by Para 6 of this communique. And, uh, you know, discussing debt issues, you know, we, 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 we highlighted three key players. One is borrowers. Second is pub, uh, pu uh, public uh, uh, creditors. And third is private creditors. Okay. So borrowers. Sometimes it's hard to say. It, it's it's really sad to say that sometimes they don't know. You know what? For example, in total, how much they are borrowing from one country you know, because of the you know deficiency of their you know debt data. So obviously, the transparency of the debt data of borrowing country need to be improved. So we are more than happy. Uh, to provide uh, uh, necessary technical assistance uh, bilaterally or through uh, IMF and World Bank uh, to you know, uh, improve uh, their de data uh, for more enhanced transparency. That's one thing. And second thing, uh, for public creditors. Uh, luckily, uh, we had already uh, approved so-called G20 operational guidelines for sustainable financing uh, uh, in Baden-Baden two years ago. Okay, so under Japanese presidency, we asked every members of G20 to conduct so-called self-assessment for this guideline. Now, how much they 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 comply with this guideline, which had been already agreed in two years ago, right? Uh, on voluntary basis. And as a result, 15 countries out of 19 countries uh, submitted this uh, you know, self-assessment voluntarily. Some countries didn't. I'm not supposed to say which country didn't, but you can guess. Uh, uh, it's pity uh, that some countries didn't do it, but at the same time, I hope uh, this exercise this year uh, would uh, uh, you know, have a function as a kind of pressure on the countries those uh, didn't you know, submit. Uh, this uh, this uh, uh, self assessment. A third, uh, third, uh, third key player is uh, private uh, uh, creditor, and uh, this communique says we support the work of the IIF, Institute of International Finance, on voluntary principles for debt transparency. Blah blah blah. So they are working on this, uh, you know, voluntary uh, principle for debt transparency issue, and they decided to include. Uh, that the sustainability elements into their principle. So we very much welcome uh, that uh, development by uh, private uh, creditors. Okay, those are the debt issues uh, in para six. UHC, just one word. Uh, universal health coverage is also uh, you know, uh, one of our top priority and the Japanese presidency, and we have been advocating uh, the idea uh, to promote UHC in developing countries, okay, uh, for four years. And in, for Japan, we introduced uh, UHC, uh, you know, in, Universal Health College, as early as 1961, okay, 1961. So we are trying to advocate a couple of ideas uh, that for the countries, uh, it's better uh, to introduce UHC as early as possible in, in their stage of development. And second, uh, it's not really a good idea to leave everything to health minister, but 
uh, finance minister should be involved from day one because it costs a lot. And also, it's not really a good idea to rely too much on external financing, you know, OD and so on. They should, you know, mainly rely on their domestic resources, which means, you know, a tax revenue or you know, social, uh, social, you know, premium and so on. Okay, those are uh, the, uh, you know discussed and, and agreed uh, by G20 this year, and uh, it, uh, the consequence is properly reflected in the so-called G20 Shared Understanding uh, Documents. Uh, which has not been uh, publicized to everybody. And uh, that, that's mentioned in part nine of this uh, communique. All right, finally, tax. Uh, this is one of my favorite topics uh, because I've been involved, involved in BEPS uh, for, for more than 10 years now. Uh, BEPS started uh, you know, in uh, 2012. Uh, to tackle, uh, tackle uh, with the, uh, the problem of BEPS, BEPS erosion and profit shifting. And uh, 2016, was it 16? Yeah, 16. Uh, when Turkey hosted G20, we uh, publicized you know, our you know, final recommendation about BEPS, uh, 200 pages you know, report. And uh, that almost covered every you know, issue concerning BEPS. But a couple of things remained to be addressed. And one of them is digital taxation, how to uh, properly uh, impose corporate tax on digital e-commerce, OK? Two issues is here. First, is, uh, first issue is uh, assuming uh, some e-commerce e takes place here in Japan, OK? And they make profit, huge profit by, let's say, American companies, okay? So American companies make profits here in Japan. So of course we have a right, Japan has a right to tax on them uh, as a source country, okay? But uh, according to the traditional uh, international taxation rule, we need PE, which stands for permanent establishment, which means some kind of fiscal presence here, like factory, office, branch, any, anything. But some fiscal presence should be here, and some you know, economic activity uh, should take place there. And uh, then you know, we can tax our corporate tax accordingly. We can impose our corporate tax accordingly. But in the case of e-commerce, uh, so many cases, there, there is no PE at all, no economic, uh, no, sorry, no uh, physical presence at all in, in Japan. So as long as you know, we stick to the conventional uh, wisdom or PE principle, there is no clue for us to impose tax on e-commerce activities here in Japan conducted by foreign companies. Okay? So we need to discuss what should be our alternative? What should create the value added even without PE? Okay? And uh, that's one thing. And second thing is, okay, after they you know, make profit here, it's slightly better if they bring that, that profit back to the U.S. and uh, declare, uh, you know, uh, to the IRS and and uh, taxed. But you know, well, most uh, uh, notably, you know, sometimes you know those companies just shift those profits from Japan to tax havens, okay, uh, where no no taxation will be imposed. So as a result, no taxation in Japan, no taxation in U.S. as a resident country, but no taxation in tax havens. So we, we would call it non-double taxation. Taxation nowhere. That needs to be addressed. Those are two things uh, which has been pending you know, after uh, you know, BEP's fi final uh, report was publicized uh, three years ago. And uh, this year uh, in Fukuoka, we could uh, you know, indicate you know, uh, those two you know, issues uh, clearly. Um, uh, and uh, we also concluded that uh, these two issues should be discussed and concluded by 2020. So we, uh, we need one more, one more year uh, to discuss this and settle. Uh, but for the first you know, issue, uh, what would be the alternative to PE principle? Uh, right now, there are a couple of you know, ideas are floating. One, uh, this is a UK proposal, users participation. User participate in some kind of you know uh, e-commerce economic activities like you click nice right, you provide your personal information for free, but uh, it's become big data and create a huge huge value added for that company. So UK is saying that that may be a source of excess profit of those companies. Users participation. So maybe we can uh, uh, we can impose the corporate taxation based on the concept of users participation 
even with that PE. That UK is proposal. That's very interesting. Very interesting. But maybe uh, the coverage uh, by utilizing this concept of user participation may be very narrow, right? It may not cover every aspect of e-commerce like we initially intended. So US uh, is coming up with another idea. They say maybe it's better to focus on marketing intangibles. They are saying that you know, the reason why you know, good sells well in Japanese market, in Chinese market, is simply because the brand name as a result of you know, marketing efforts of that country, right? Mm -hmm. uh, intangibles. Mm -hmm. So intangibles cannot be seen, but it's there as a source of excess profit. So why not focus on intangibles uh, for us to impose uh, you know, corporate taxation on e-commerce, even without PE? Okay, that's the US, US idea. It's also interesting, uh, but it may be very broad. Like, you know, it may not be you know, confined to e-commerce. Like, you know, ma ma manufacturing uh, may be covered by this concept. Uh, uh, well, uh, as, soon, as long as they have brand name in one you know, uh, country, right? Uh, so those are the two main you know, ideas floating around. And in Fukuoka, we you know, clearly indicated those two, two ideas and uh, you know, uh, en uh, endorsed uh, the work plan uh, to address, address those uh, issues uh, towards the conclusion uh, by 2020. And the second issue, how to deal with tax haven. Uh, you know, accumulated profit in tax haven uh, is uh, uh, another interesting uh, uh, issue. And one idea which came from, uh, which has come from Germany and France, is that you know every country has CFC registration. Japan does, China does, France does, UK does, U US does uh, to you know tackle the tax haven issue. But at the same time, you know uh, how to define tax haven is different from country to country. You know, what kind of you know, income be included included in the apparent company differs from country to country. So now uh, the Germany and uh, France are saying that uh, why don't we just coordinate further and agree on minimum tax rate. Minimum tax rate, which is quite interesting, you know. Uh, as a country, we should tax at least X percent. I'm talking about the corporate, corporate tax, okay? And uh, it's very interesting in a sense that we never discussed how to, whether we should coordinate tax rate itself, because it's, it's really a sober, sovereign matter, right? But, uh, you know, triggered by this digital taxation discussion, uh, we also uh, kind of endorsed uh, in our pro work program uh, to discuss that. So after one year, uh, I'm really looking forward to, you know, uh, kind of consensus-based solution uh, to tackle those two issues uh, in the context of G20 uh, agenda. Okay, sorry, I, maybe I spoke too much. I'm sorry, Robin. I'll stop here and take uh, any questions you might have. So that was great. Thank you for that comprehensive overview of what went on in Fukuoka. So I'd like to open the floor now to questions. Um, if you could state your name and affiliation and come forward to the microphone. We'll start with Anthony Rowley. Um, Anthony Rowley, um, South China Morning Post and other publications, but Vice Minister, um, as you said, it's difficult to maintain the momentum of international cooperation in peacetime or when there isn't a crisis, but it seems that we seem to be sleepwalking towards another financial crisis given the trade wars, the slowing in growth, debt problems and so on. So realistically, this meeting in Fukuoka, uh, the, the leaders' meeting, can it do anything to stem this drift towards an economic slash financial crisis? If not, at least, is it likely to put in place um, emergency measures, exchanges of liquidity, and so on to deal with any crisis? And related to that, um, Donald Trump seems to think now that he has the right to criticize Mario Draghi for daring to suggest uh, further monetary easing. So presumably, it's only a matter of time before Mr. Trump criticizes Abenomics, because one uh, element of Abenomics is monetary easing and that can be said to be uh, having some influence on the yen exchange rate. I'd like your opinion on that, please. Okay, exchange rate. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. You know, answering to your last part of your question, uh, English is okay or? Whichever you prefer. Okay, m maybe, okay, I, 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 I'll give you my answer in English first. Uh, 
、エクスチェンジレイト。ああ、OK あ、じゃあ、日本語の方がいいそうなんで、日本語でお答えしますが、まずあの最初におっしゃった、あの平時であるからこそ、非常にあの政策協調のモメンタムが。えー、維持されるのが難しいというのはま,まさにその通りだと思いますね。ただそれだからこそですね。それだからこそその G20 の究極的な目的である包摂的でバランスの取れたまあサステナブルなですね成長をどうやって維持していくかということにまあ最も本質的な議論を今こそすべきだというふうに我々思ったんですね。だからあまりその,あの今おっしゃったようなも,もちろんトレードテンションの心配もありますし、あのまあ金融政策をめぐるいろんなあの発言もありますけれども、あのそうではなくてもう少し中長期的にですね我々の目標を達成するために落ち着いた議論をしたいということで何がですねその中長期的な成長を妨げるかというまあことを考えてやっぱり一つはこのグローバルインバランスの問題だろうというふうに思ったんですね。がもう一つは高齢化の問題だろうと。でこの2つの問題にです、ね、我々は G20 としてきちんとアドレスしていかなければです、ね、やっぱり中長期的な成長を望めないとそう,いうそういう落ち着いた議論を今,今こそすべきだということであの、まあ、あの我々としてはこの2つのアジェンダを、まあ、トッププライオリティに加えたということであります。したがってそこまでとりあえず英語にあ。あ、ああ、すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみません。すみせ These various、uh, trade tensions and so on. Therefore, it is very important for the G20 to be a place where calm discussion and debate can be conducted in regards to these mid to long term goals. This is the very reason why we, as the、uh, chairs for this year, decided to have the two key issues on the agenda first, of global imbalance, and second, of the aging issue, as these are two issues which the G20 must address in order to achieve the mid to long term growth. それであの今おっしゃったです、ね、貿易摩擦に関しては、これはあの、まあ、正直申し上げて、財務大臣の必ずしも所長範囲じゃないんですけれども、まあ、財務大臣としてあの、世界経済に与える、まあ、マクロ的なインパクトですね、それに関しては、まあ、時間がかかりましたけれども、先ほど申し上げた3つのです、ね、文章で懸念を表明できたと思っています。で、それ以上、まあ、細かな、例えば WTO 改革を具体的にどう進めるかとか、あるいは保護主義をどう取り,取り扱うとか、それはおそらく大阪で議論になるものだと思っております。And in regards to the issue of trade tensions, which was referred to, this is not strictly within the domain of the、uh, agenda to be respons or responsible by the Minister of Finance.、Uh, however, of course, looking at the macro impacts on the global economy of this, this is indeed an、uh, issue of concern. This is why, although it did indeed take some time, the three sentences in the communique to which I referred were included in regards to this issue. As to the more concrete issues, such as, for example, reform of the WTO, I believe that these will be discussed or addressed at the upcoming. 最後にあの為替の話を質問されましたのでお答えしますとこれはあのもう G20 あるいは G7 で,です、ね、何度も繰り返し繰り返し議論されてきた議,論議題であります。And finally, in regards to the、uh, final point, in regards to the exchange rate, this is something which will repeatedly, on many, many occasions, h a s been discussed、uh, within the G8 and 20. 確かにですね、まあ、日本をはじめ、各国とも、まあ、ここ数年、まあ、緩和的な、リーマンショックの後ですね、非常に緩和的な金融政策を取ってきましたから、それが結果としてですね、為替相場に影響を与えた、これは誰にも否定できない事実であります。And of course,、uh, Japan and other countries in recent years since the Lehman shock,、uh, it must be said that this has had the result of, or this easing has had a result、uh, of having an impact on、uh, these exchange rates and so on. ただしですね、それがあくまでもですね、緩和的金融政策の結果であり、目的ではない。逆に言うとです、ね、緩和的な金融政策を取ることが自国通貨安の誘導ではない、あくまでも結果である。ということであるならば、それはお互いに許容しようというのが G7、G20 の合意です。Uh, however,、um, well, this fact cannot be denied. It must be said that this monetary easing is、uh, not the objective of this, but rather the result is the impact on these exchange rates as well. This was not for the purpose of leading the own country's currency and so on. So, this is something which was agreed upon by the G7 and 20. あの実際にあの日本の場合にもです、ね、当然、あの黒田総裁にあっておられる、まあ、緩和的な金融政策はデフレ脱却という国内政策のためにやっているんであって、通貨安の誘導のためにやっておられるわけではないということは
は広く理解されていると思います。And in reality, in the case of Japan, for example, this easing、uh, was looking at for the domestic purposes and policy in regards to deflation rather than looking at the leading of Japan's currency as well. I believe that this is a commonly held、uh, understanding. And to one more thing, I will say that I have a question about the question. 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 And one further point to add, which was not directly referred to in the question, but which is indeed a point of、uh, concern or、uh, interest for us as well, is looking at the various bilateral negotiations.、Uh, for example, the、uh, discussions in which Japan has entered with the United States, looking at how the issue of exchange will be brought into these discussions is an issue of very high interest for us. I know. おそらく日本のスタンスはあのよく知られていると思いますが、我々の基本的なスタンス、これに関する基本的なスタンスは、あの我々としては為替政策と貿易政策というのはあのミックスアップしてはいけないというのは、我々のまあ確固たるスタンスであります。And I believe that it is well known, but Japan's basic stance on this issue is that the two issues of exchange rate and also trade should not be mixed up. Thank you.、Um, let me take more questions from the working press. Yes, Patrick. My name is Patrick Walter, Frankfurt Allgemeine Zeitung, the German Daily.、Uh, I have two questions, if I may. If I remember, after the Lehman shock, there was an agreement by the G20 country not to raise any trade,、uh, trade matters and not to raise any tariff hurdles or any other trade impeding、uh, constructs. If you compare that to the situation today, it seems that the G20 has completely lost any power to, <laughs> to work together because you, can't, you don't even argue with the United States. I mean, if you look at your statements, you try to find some kind of compromise, but it's definitely a very weak compromise. So, how do you compare that situation? Would you say that the, that the G20 has completely lost control? <laughs> And the second question,、uh, looking forward to the Osaka meeting, it seems so that the、uh, bilateral talks between Mr. Trump and, Mr. and China might be the major topic of this meeting. Do you think that this might overshadow the、uh, G20 meeting and that might be a risk to break up the G20 meeting if Mr. Trump and Mr. Xi don't come to any conclusion? えー、とドイツの記者です、2つほど質問がありますが、まず1つ目がまあそのリーマンショックの直後にはです、ね、まあ、その G20 の方でまあ貿易の徴兵などについてそういった問題をしないというようなことがまあ以前あったんですけれども、今のまあ現状に比べると、非常にまあその違いがあるというふうにまああの思います、例えば今、アメリカとまあ妥協するためにアメリカと議論しない、喧嘩をしないというようなスタンスが今の G20 のまあ印象としてはあるんですけれども、そういった意味で G20 というのは、そういったまあ貿易のテーマに関してもそのコントロールというものを失ったとっいうふうに思われますでしょうか、そして2つ目の質問の方が大阪の会合に向けてなんですけれども、今、非常に注目されているのは G20 の会合そのものというよりも、米中の交渉、米中の会議というふうにあの思います、その中で、まあ、G20 の会議そのものよりも、米中の交渉の方が大きなテーマになり、そういったようなリスクがあるというふうに思われますでしょうか。でもしあの米中の方でで何かか決着ですとかあの、まああのまあ、解決でというものがもし見つからなかった場合には G20 にはどういう影響があるのかということについてお願いします。はい。あのまず一つ目のご質問ですが、あの私もあの覚えてますが、あのまあリマショックの後 G20 でまあ政策協調危機時における政策協調の議論をまあまあ深刻にしたときにですね、あのまあ首脳方はまあ三つのことに合意したんだと思います。Uh, so, first of all, I remember、uh, myself in the time following the Lehman shock、uh, in this emergency situation, there were three main points to which the leaders agreed upon.、まあ、ここ uh, first of all, not to have any kinds of alliances in regards to tariffs. And the second, to avoid having any economic blocks developed. And also to not have any kind of competition in regards to reduction of currency. 
でそういうまあ3つのまあ合意を前提にですねあの最初、私が申し上げたまあ財政の拡大とかあるいは金融規制の導入、まあ、等によって我々は世界金融危機を乗り切ったわけです。And、uh, using as a precondition these three agreements which were reached at that time, this was when the various、um, monetary and fiscal regulations also were put in place to avoid or to try and stem off the、uh, crisis at the time. The 11年経ってですね、今おっしゃったように、確かにあの貿易交渉は、まあ、バイの交渉が、まあ、日本も始めました、EU も始め、ま、これから始めるでしょう、でメキシコ、カナダとアメリカとの間で今、決着しました、まあ、そうしたことで、どちらかというと、多国間というよりは、そのバイ、あるいはリージョナルですね、貿易交渉が、まあ、勃興してきたというのは事実であります。And so, looking back, well, now 11 years later from this situation, as was mentioned as well in regards to trade negotiations now,、uh, rather than these multilateral aspects, there are these bilateral aspects looking at well, Japan or the EU, or for example, also Mexico and the United States now as well. It must be acknowledged that there is this shift from multilateral to more bilateral or regional aspects. ただ我々はでですすねねバイラテラテルなな貿易のトークがです、ね、あの決して意味がないというふうには思わないんですね。それはそれでですね、あのまあ自由貿易を維持するために必要なあのことを議論するのであれば、それは一つのですね政策ツールだと思っているんです。Uh, however, by no means do we believe that such bilateral trade talks lack any kind of significance or meaning. For example, if they are for the purpose to maintain free trade agreements and so on, there is a role for them. ただ同時にですね、あのマルチの枠組みをですね維持することによってこの自由貿易を守っていくという立場も非常に大事なことだと思っています。However, at the same time, we believe it is very important to have this multilateral framework in order to maintain free trade agreements at the same time. This is very important. First, w e l l it is not an agenda which falls under the scope of the Minister of Finance. However, the reform of the WTO is a very important point. これはあの大阪でも議論になると思います。I believe that this will be discussed in Osaka。これもう一つはさっきあの私あの申し上げたように、あの財務大臣のまあ首相の範囲内で言えばやっぱりグローバルインバランスの議論をもう一度ですね思い起こすということだと思います。And a further point、uh, which I referred to in my presentation and which does fall under the scope of the finance ministers is the very important issue of global imbalances which should be come back、uh, to which it should be come back. あの2つ目のご質問はです、ね、大阪であのもし中国、まあ、習近平主席とトランプ大統領のお会いになったらそれで終わっちゃうんじゃないか。っていう話ですけど、それは皆さんの報道ぶりによるんだと思いますね。And in regards to your second question about Osaka, whether、uh, well, Mr. Trump and Mr. Xi's meetings would overshadow or that would be the end all of the G20, I believe that this、uh, falls to or this comes down to how the media is reporting this. あのその意味であの確かにあのもしお二人の人があればあのビッグニュースですし、あのまあそれでどまあどこまで物事が解決するのか、これは非常にまあ解決しないのかですね、大事な話だと思いますけれども、ぜひ皆さんにはですね、それだけじゃなくてこの G20 いろいろ苦労して我々1年準備かけてやってますのであのこちらをお忘れなくですね報道ぶりをよろしくお願いしたいと思います。And of course, in that sense, if there is some kind of a resolution or agreement reached by the two leaders, that it will be big news and it is something which, of course, should be paid attention to. However, I do hope that the media can also pay attention not only to this point, but also the other aspects which the G20 will be discussing. There has been, of course, over a year's worth of preparation and very dedicated hard work gone into this, looking at many other aspects as well. So I hope that the representatives of the media can also pay attention to the many other issues which will be covered at the G20 meeting. I, I hope I, I answered your question. <laughs> Um, yes. Front. <laughs> Thank you. My name is Agustin de Gracia from Spanish News Agency F. Something political. I would like to know if you have any comments about the decision of the Mexican president not to be president of Osaka and be replaced by the finance secretary. I think he under I understand he was complaining about the G20 is not addressing properly the global inequities. That's the reason he decided not to come. あのスペインの FA 通信の記者です、一つあの政治的な質問をお伺いしたいんですけれども、メキシコの大統領自身があの G20 の方に出席しないというふうにあの表明されてるんですけれども、大臣あのが代理で出席するということなんですけれども、G20 そのものがまあそのあの不均衡という問題にはまあ取り組まないというようなことがまああの理由としてあの言われているようなんですけれども、それについてもしコメントがあればお願いします。えっと、あのメキシコの大統領があの来られないというのは我々も聞いてまして、非常にあのそれはそれで残念なことだなと思っています。Uh, we have also heard that the President of Mexico will not be attending the G20 in Osaka, and this is, of course, something unfortunate. 
、そういったのそのリフがですね、おっしゃったことが本当に理由なのかどうかっていうのは我々もあの必ずしもそうは思っておりませんで、それはあのいろんなご都合があってですね、で財務大臣が来られるわけですから、しっかりあの財務大臣と必要な議論をしていきたいなと思っています。Uh, however, in regards to the reasons for his not attending this,、uh, we are not necessarily、um, sure whether they are. It is the same reason that you have just mentioned. We have heard it's also due to other circumstances and scheduling and so on as well. And the fact that he is also sending his minister of finance in his place, we believe,、uh, shows that we can continue to have the very、uh, constructive、uh, discussions with Mexico in Osaka. Okay, thank you. More questions? Yes. <clears throat> After the IMF crisis in 1999, many of the middle sized Asian countries insisted they want to have free trade but not free、uh, investment, meaning no Wall Street.、Uh, now you make this interesting distinction between a trade imbalance and account imbalance.、Uh, Are you going? Are we, I mean, the TPP didn't want to have any of that distinction. Are you going to refer to, back to that thinking of the mid level Asian countries at the, at the IMF crisis time? And if I may add, <clears throat> in Japan, high quality infrastructure investment often has been a synonym of Japanese, not Chinese. The uh, uh, Indonesian Shinkansen, for example. Now, that was easy as long as it was the,、uh, the G7. The, do the Chinese accept this kind of thinking at the G20? はい、ドイツの記者です2つ,つあの2つほど質問があります、1つ目は IMF の99年の危機の後にですに、ね、アジアの,、まああの,まあ、あの国の方がですね、まあ、その自由貿易は歓迎する、ただそのウォール・ストリートのような自由な投資というものは歓迎しないというようなことが、まあ、当時の政策としてあったんですけれども、今回の,、まあ、その,あの貿易、そしてアカウントの,、まあ、あの違い、まあ、それであの、まあ、あの区別をつくというようなことが、先ほどのこう発言の中にはあったんですけれども、それを一つ、まあ新しいいことだとだ思いますその中で例えば TPP の中ではそういったような、まあ、区別はなかったというふうにまあ印象を受けていますがそれについてのコメントをぜひお願いいたしますそして2つ目の方が、まあ、こちらの質の高いあのインフラ投資ということなんですけれども以前日本の文脈の中で、まあ、そういったことはあの中国の投資ではなくて中国のインフラではなくて日本のインフラ投資であるというようなことで、まあ、そういった文脈で使われることが多かったと思うんですけれども G7 の中ではまあそれがあのまあ、受け入れられていたと思いますが G20 の場合です中国もそういったことについてはどういったあのポジションどういった立場だったのかについてぜひコメントをお願いいたします、はい、あの1点目のご質問ですがこの資本自由化のです、ね、必要性あるいはそのタイミングあるいはそのシークエンスです、ね、については我々はアジア通貨危機から多くのことを学びました。Uh, first of all, in regards to the first question about the timing and sequencing of freedom of capital and so on, on, this is something、uh, which、uh, we have learned a great deal from the Asian、uh, currency crisis. あのまあ、基本的にはです、ねまあ、国内の金融システムがある程度きちっとです、ね、確立する前にです、ね、あの資本の自由化をやりすぎるとです、ね、非常にまあ資本の動きに対してその国の資本市場が脆弱バルナブルなものになるというのは注目した見解かと思います。And、uh, one of the fundamental points in regards to this is that if this、uh, liberalization of the monetary system and so on is done before a full system can be established in place、uh, in these certain countries、uh, domestically, this leads To a certain kind of vulnerability, which is very much what we saw in the time of the Asian crisis. あの実際あの、まあ、結果だけ見てみると、中国はです、ね、当時、アジア通貨危機が起こったときに、強烈な資本規制をです、ね、維持することによって、危機の影響をほとんど受けなかったわけですね。Uh, for example, we saw at the time of this IMF crisis,、uh, China had indeed these very strict regulations,、uh, monetary regulations, and so on in place at the time, therefore, was not very much、uh, affected by the crisis at the time. And so, the other thing is that the IMF has been a very strong regulation. 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 
And I believe that well, later on, the discussions within the IMF very much focused on it is not only about the, just the liberalization of capital, but what kind of timing this should be done at as well. I believe that this is very much the main view now, and there is very serious discussion within the IMF now in regards to what kind of regulations should be put in place, for example, after the liberalization process and the sequencing in regards to that. And the second point, uh, the OECD has actually issued the only legal document in regards to these capital flow, uh, capital movements. This is the OECD's Code of Liberalization of Capital Movements. で、これがですね、実は何十年ぶりかは忘れましたが、あの、今年改定されましてあの、福岡でもこのあの改定の論陳をやったんですけれども、ここの中でもですね、あの、どういうまあ、あの、条件でですね、今資本規制 and actually this code was uh, reviewed, uh, reviewed or renewed for the first time in several decades actually in the recent meetings in Fukuoka. The launch of this uh, revitalized or the renewed code uh, was made during the Fukuoka meeting and this included very clearly also conditions for regulations to be put in place following liberalization as well. あの、もう一つ私思い出すのはですね、ま、中国のことなんですが、ま、中国の人民元がですね、ま、2014年以降タイトルで弱含んで、ま、あの、弱くなってきたわけですね。and the, uh, another point to which I was reminded in regards to China, looking at the valuation of the RMB, this has actually decreased since uh, 2014. So, yeah, no, the and so following this, fearing a drastic fall in the exchange rate of the RMB, China uh, put in place measures or intervened in that on a daily basis, actually looking at purchasing RMB and exchanging it to dollars. And actually, as a result of this process, in two years, it fell by one trillion. Yeah, it was therefore in reserve. それで、え、これは持たないということで実は日本がですね、え、中国が and uh, so actually at the time of the G20 um, uh, Ministers of Finance meeting being held in Shanghai in China, uh, Minister Aso actually made recommendations in regards to the interim measures uh, in regards to China. まあ、あの、まあ、その結果は、まあ、見れば皆さんご存知のようにですね、まあ、中国は介入をかなり控えるようになって、それから資本規制を詰めることによってですね、人民元の為替レートを安定化させて今日に至ってます。And as a result, well, uh, you can see the result of this yourselves actually as a result of taking on this advice rather than this intervention methods as well. China looked at instead introducing various regulations and so on and was able to reach the stability in regards to the rate of the RMB that we saw today. さて、あの、ご質問に戻りますと あの、資本自由化一辺倒が必ずしもいいことではないという議論はIMFでも行われてますし、OECDでも行われてますし、G20でも行われているというふうに理解していただければと思います。あ、therefore and in regards to the second question about high quality infrastructure investment, this was of course something which we did have very lengthy uh, discussions with China about. Particularly on the issue of debt sustainability on the macro level for the entire country, this was something uh, in regards to which China had many uh, opinions or positions ただですね、これも皆さんご案内のように、G20の今回の会合の前に、あの、一帯一路フォーラムというのを中国が開催されました。uh, however, as you are, of course, aware, prior to the recent G20 meeting, China actually held the One Belt, One Road Forum in China. And actually, at that time, China itself also announced its own thoughts in regards to debt sustainability during that meeting as well. And 
の高いインフラということを言い続けてきてです、ね、中国もだんだんこう理解を示してきて、まあ、日本の言うことに耳を傾けです、ね、最終的にはそういう議論に乗ってくれたのかなというふうに思っています。And therefore, I believe that utilizing this opportunity of the G20 as an、uh, approach of a way to discuss this issue with China to bring up、uh, how to look at including debt sustainability within this discussion, it is something which, through these continued discussions and so on, China has gradually started to understand and acknowledge this, to listen to the position and the、uh, thoughts which Japan has been proposing, and therefore we were able to reach the agreement、uh, to which we have come. オフィシャリーにですね、正式にこの、その高いインフラの原則が、今回。承認されたということは大変大きな成果だと思っています。ウォール・ストリート・ジャーナルの藤川と申しますあの消費増税に関してですけれどもあの福岡の G20 でも麻生大臣が、まあ、予定通り引き上げるということで表明をされているかと思うんですけれども改めましてこうやってリスクが高まっている中で、まあ、増税するということの日本経済や、まあ、または世界経済の影響など、えー、とまたそ,のそこまでリスクが高まっている中でもその増税しなければいけないというところの、えー、と考え方改めて教えていただけますでしょうか。I am from the Wall Street Journal. I would like to ask a question in regards to consumption tax. Mr. Aso mentioned in Fukuoka that、uh, the government of Japan will continue its plan to、uh, increase this. But given as we have recognized these increased risks, intensified risks which are existing now and the potential impact on the Japanese and global economy, I would like to once again ask the position in regards to this increase and also if it is indeed necessary amongst this environment of higher risks. Let's just take all the questions first. Siegfried Nittel, freelancer from Germany.、Um, Japan has now the, the kind of a presidency of a G20. And in the case of a, a free trade, I think Japan is a very cl more close to, the, to China, but、uh, the US is its ally. How will, will this affect uh, his uh, running the, uh, the Presidency and at the, at the G20 conference. ドイツのフリーランスです、まあ、G20 の議長としてまあ日本があのまあ今、止められているんですけれども自由貿易というテーマに関してはアメリカより中国に近いのが日本の立場だと思いますしかしアメリカはもちろんあの同盟国でありますそれが日本のまあ議長としての役割にはどういう影響があるのかについてお伺いします。AFP 通信、日山と申します、今日はありがとうございます、あのデジタルタックスの件で,です、ね、あのヨーロッパとアメリカの例と、あのいろいろあのインテラスティングだという高評価でしたが、あの日本があのどのアイデアがまあいいという、そのサポートをポ,のポジションを表明するというのはいつぐらいになりそうか、うん、あのそれとです、ね、あの米中の,グローバルあの、えっと、貿易のテンションがグローバルの,その。あのあそれではいいろいろなななリスクがある中であのアメリカとあの、えー、冷静に、えーディスカッションするためには、次のエレクションサイクルも終わった方がワイズであるというような意見が、あの福岡であの G20 のメンバーの中から出てきたかどうか、その辺について伺えればと思います。Let's, let's, let's, sorry. Um, from AFP, I have a question. First of all, in regards to the digital tax,、uh, we had various comments and so on saying that this was very interesting. I would like to ask what Japan's position in regards to this, or rather, when Japan will be making official its position in regards to what proposals for digital tax are most appropriate. And, and next. Let's leave the, se the second question, we'll combine with Siegfried's question, please. Okay. Thank you. じゃあ,あの簡単にですね、えー、まずあの消費増税に関しては、これはもうあの総理もですね麻生大臣も何度も国会で答弁しているように、あのリーマンショック級の危機が起こらない限りは、ですね予定通り実施するということだろうと思いますし、今、リーマンショック級の危機があの起こるような兆しは、先ほど申し上げたように、今回の,あの G20 の福岡でも、ですね、まあ、景,気あの景気判断が示されましたけれども、まあ、そういう状況にはないということだと思います。Uh, first of all, in regards to the increase of consumption tax, so this has been repeatedly conveyed by 
the Prime Minister and the Finance Minister. Uh, however, unless there is a crisis on the scale, once again, of an emergency like the Lehman crisis, this will proceed as planned as well. And I believe that the statements coming out of the G20 meeting in Fukuoka show the evaluation that we are not indeed facing such a crisis. そのあとにはあの消費の落ち込みがある。これは我々が前回経験したところですので、まあそういうまあ悪いインパクトをできるだけ軽減するための措置はですね、まあいろいろご案内のようなですね、措置を講ずることによってまあ軽減できていると思い